let us race on. John, it may be a while since you've seen this, but we always tell you that we're recording the sessions and we'll also send you the recording afterwards along with a copy of the presentation so that should you wish to go through it in slow time or, or check something out later, you can certainly do so. Uh, we're going to have an interactive session later if you'd like to join in. Um, and if you would, then we need to have, well, I know you both got Parish Online accounts and you both up and running, so that's fine. And feel free to interrupt any time if you have questions, please. Can what we're going to do today uh, is arguably my favorite part of um, Parish Online. I think this is hugely powerful, very, very uh, useful, and um, particularly good at conveying to your public what it is that you're doing within Parish Online. So basically it's the way of getting everything or anything that you wish out of Parish Online onto your local village website or any other website if you wish. So here I'm explaining a bit further. You don't need to do any coding. The system does it all for you. Um, each time that you make a change to Parish Online, any public map that you've created automatically updates. So that's one of the huge beauties of working in the cloud, that your changes are instantly visible to people who are able to see your public map. Uh, as we will see, um, being able to be on a public map is very much like being straight into Parish Online itself. The only difference is that there are no attachments in public maps but otherwise it's the same as if they're inside the parish online so i've got a couple of examples here um, which i usually jump to just to show people what they look like i'm going to cheat slightly today because in the past people had issues with downloading large um files so i'm just going to jump to different sections if i can find how to do that there we go so the first one is a new ticket there. And this is a public map produced by Stigursi. And Stigursi is a little parish in Somerset, which is uh, much more uh, well known because it's the site of the Hinkley Point nuclear power station. And if you turn on, and this is now looking, you're looking at the public map that anyone can look at. And the first thing you want to do is say, I want to see footpaths, which are called public rights of way, because that's the subject of this discussion. So Hinkley Point said, we are shipping seven and a half thousand workers every day in by bus to our work site. And that is obviously creating all sorts of issues for the villagers and their roads. Plus we've got trucks rolling backwards and forwards and all sorts of stuff. So they thought that in order to um, make some sort of compensation to the village um, they would like to uh, give them something and what they decided to offer was the upgrading of this footpath and they said wouldn't you much rather have uh, than your muddy pothole wet uncomfortable unpleasant footpath a nice little tarmac footpath that the ladies could stroll down with their baby carriages and the children could roller skate or scooter or whatever and adults could cycle down. Everyone thought it was a brilliant idea until the parish clerk got wind of it. He said, hang on a second, it isn't that simple. He said, have you thought, this being a sort of a seaside area, here is the Bristol Channel, that this is actually a Ramsar site? And he turned that on, and lo and behold, the footpath they wanted to upgrade is immediately complicated by the fact that it's in a Ramsar area and therefore subject to all sorts of restrictions. And he said, but it's not just Ramsar. Take a look at science, special sites of special scientific interest. And he turns that on and lo and behold, the same footpath is again, slam bang in the middle of an SSSI. And so it goes through with all of these other choices down here. But the beauty of this is that anybody in the public can turn a layer on or off uh, and they can see exactly what uh, anybody else would see if they were working in Parish Online. So it's a great way of getting information out onto your local village website uh, and sharing the data with them. And then that's one example. I can show you another, which is the uh, public maps. So what do we do? We did the planning apps from uh, Long Sutton. 
So here you have a map of uh, our local village. If the villagers scroll in and they can roll around and then they can see all the planning applications, but there's way too many there, it's too complicated. So let's turn off 2021, go to 2019. It's a bit lighter, just so that you can see. Um, Phil, you'll probably recognize this from an earlier training session that we've had these yeah. to show um, how you can fit everything in onto the screen. Mm -hmm. But John, for your purposes, it works just like Parish Online. So you see any item here, you click on it, and up comes the data record for it. Uh, in this case, we have a hyperlink to the, the local planning authorities portal. So anyone can just click there. And it takes them straight to the portal that deals with this particular um, application. If you want to see any of the documents associated with the application, they're all there. And all this from within your local parish community website, uh, which I think is exactly what you're supposed to be doing with Parish Online, basically getting out the information out there for everybody to see. So let's come back to here. So basically, um, all these applications of public maps are just there to show you how we can do it. And when I send you the presentation, you'll get the links to the same sites we've just looked at. So. <clears throat> Creating is a piece of cake. It's actually the simplest thing to do in Parish Online, which is fascinating to me because it's also the most powerful. So in the top right corner of your screen, you have the cogwheel. Um, you can turn on public maps and they'll sort of walk you the way through where you're gonna go. So up here, top right cogwheel, click on administration. And it brings up, as you know, your layers will show up in due course, but we're not interested in the layers at the moment, we're interested in the public maps. So go to the left-hand side, click on public maps. And then if you've got any already, then up they pop. And if you have none, there will be nothing there, but to add a new one, simply click on the plus sign. And then we're starting a new uh, operation in Parish Online. They decided to do this as a timeline. So at the top of the page here, there's a list of the steps you're going to be going through. And the one that's highlighted is the one that you're on. So we're on the first step, selecting the base map. And this is a piece of cake. Are you going to be using photography? Are you going to be using just plain map? Or are you going to be using simple map? There are three choices. The one that's green is highlighted. So this is the one that we're choosing. When you're ready, click on next. And the first thing it says is you'll now notice that you're on the select my layers uh, bait operation of the timeline and what it's saying is you're going to need to have at least one layer in the map what is it you'd like to have and this first one they're giving you is all the choices from your own parish layers and your asset register so these are the ones that you've created or somebody has created in your um, parish and you select one just by clicking on it and it pops up into the right hand side. So here for the presentation, I've selected three years worth of planning applications. Um, if you decide you don't want one of these, you just click on the arrow and it disappears back to the left. So that's very straightforward. When you're ready, move on to the next. And this one here, we're now selecting other layers. So they're saying, if you wish, you can bring in any of the third party layers. So. As we were showing in that example, you could bring in the sites of special scientific interest, you can bring in the public rights away, you can bring in everything like that. It's just a matter of scrolling through, finding the one you want, clicking on it so it appears in the right hand side. And again, I've just selected a couple. You don't have to select any of these and you don't have to select any of the previous ones, your own layers, as long as you get one of them. So you can have zero of one and just one in the other, or you can have any number from both. It's entirely up to you. Graham, I'm having difficulty scrolling down the list. I haven't got a, a scroll bar. On Available what, layers. what I'm doing? Available layers. Oh, okay. So you're doing this as we're going along, are you? All right. Yeah. So no scroll bar on the right, so you can't see them. Uh, let's just back off. I'm going to back off um, showing my screen a second, Phil. Let's take a look at yours and see, and you can show me if you like what it is you're looking I'm at. Right. Hang on. I'm on a different computer again. Oh, we're back to that again. Okay. Yeah, never well, mind. Just, just carry uh, on. 
Uh, my, my argument would be it's a question of just waiting for it to download fully from the cloud, because each time you're doing this layers business, you're actually taking it from the cloud. And if for some reason there's a slowness on the internet connection, it, it takes a few seconds. Uh, okay. If it's not that, then we'll take okay. it. Um, all right. So I'll go back to sharing my screen. Okay. And if you've now got the number of layers you wanted from the third party layers uh, page, again, we can just click on next and scroll on. And now you're on the start location part of the choices. And this is very straightforward, but uh, this is going to be what shows up when people first go into public map. So you've got to have a nice balance between enough of the area you're looking at for people to recognize it, but not being so zoomed in, they've got no idea what they're looking at or it's too complicated. So this is very straightforward. It's just a matter of adjusting the balance of this. You can go left, right, up or down, zoom in or zoom out to find what you think is going to be the most uh, easy way for viewers to orient themselves before they get into the detail. So that's the purpose of this page. The start location is what's the first page going to be that people see. So when you got that sorted out and it's just a matter of scrolling around and zooming in and out in the usual way, uh, you move on to next. And here we are saying, what is the configuration going to be when people start up? So first things first, they want you to give them a map title. Now the public doesn't see this. This is just to make sure that we can find this later. Um, because we've discovered what happens if you don't put in anything on a, a new feature on a map. So the map title is purely for your benefit. And then by default, these layers get turned on, but you can turn them off. So if you don't want the user to be able to turn layers on and off, um, you remove the facility. Ditto, if you don't want them to be able to uh, click on the various items in the map, um, you then turn that one off. But I don't know any reason why you would want to put these as off, which is why they default to on. It's just that you give them the opportunity should you wish to. By the same token, if all layers are turned on when you start up, that can be very confusing, too much information. So you can select which of the layers that you've got chosen. If you look at these, these are the ones that we selected when we came through uh, this step and this step. Uh, so... Uh, you may wish to simplify this. Again, for argument's sake, I've just turned them all on, but you can have full control over which of these you turn on or off. When you're ready, move on. And you're virtually done now. So this is the last page, and but it basically showing you saying, info, this is what we've done. We're using the basic uh, ordnance survey map as the standard, and we're using these six layers. Uh, <clears throat> we're... Uh, this is the URL that will be created, and you can copy this just by clicking on the icon and sending it to people so that they can have a look and see what you're doing. Or if you have a village website and you want to put this on, this is known as the iframe code, and any web designer will take that and just whack it in. In fact, I know a lot of parish council hawks who do this themselves. It's very straightforward. It's just a matter of cutting and pasting into the right place on your village website. So if you're handy with that, you can just do it yourself. If not, you click it here, copy it, and send it off to your web designer or your whoever maintains your website for you. Uh, you do have the option of a preview. So before you send it, you can see what you're going to be looking at. Um, but this is in a smaller part of the screen. I actually recommend to people that you click on this URL, stuff it into a new window in your browser up here, and take a look at it full screen. Uh, and then you see what everybody else is seeing and you can come back and make adjustments as necessary. Okay, so <clears throat> a word of warning about attributes. In Parish Online, when you click on something, what Parish Online call info clicking, um, it will bring up the additional information in the left-hand column. Uh, and one of those, or rather all of those, will be known as attributes. Now, you will probably want most of your users to uh, see the same attributes, but there's probably, or almost definitely, 
one or two notes that you don't want people to see. So if you're, for instance, looking at uh, your allotments, you may have in the notes uh, field a, a, a comment that says this payer is inevitably late on payment or you, maybe he's very argumentative or whatever it is that your parish clerk has put in there to help her um, know what she's dealing with. That one you don't want to uh, go out to Parish Online's public map. So you have to select each layer or each column in each layer very carefully to make sure you get the ones that and Parish Online doesn't do it automatically for you because they have no idea which ones you want, which ones you don't want. So we need to go through them and, and select them, which I think is a very safe move. So that's what we're into. That's the step we're into now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Select the My Layers icon to get up the one you want. Go into Columns. And you'll see that here is a column of uh, attributes in public. And again, uh, Phil, you'll be very familiar with these because we've had the required column in use several times. But this one, you'll note, is completely empty. In other words, when you first create your public map, none of the attributes in the layer that you've can uh, to, will be shown through. So you'll get the basic map uh, and you'll get the feature itself, but when people click on the feature, there will be no visible information until you say which ones you want. So you click them here, and obviously the one you may leave unclicked is the notes one that says, this is a lousy pair. Um, but all the rest you can click quite safely. Um, and again, if you're storing things like personal telephone numbers and so forth, you wouldn't want them to be in the public map. So no. a little bit of discretion needed here um, over what you're doing with the data. Um, and you just need to be a bit thoughtful uh, mm. about which one. And let me mention here in passing about the hyperlink. So we have a link to the uh, our local South Somerset District Council portal which is the bit where you can get all the further information on the uh, planning application. So we want that to be live. So you turn it on here, and then I just draw your attention to these three little dots. You need to click on those and just select the default uh, pop-up that comes up. I can't remember if we deal with this later, but certainly it's worth my mentioning it to you now. So if you're going to put a public link into your, uh, sorry, a hyperlink into your public map, you need to select it here and you need to click on the three dots. All right. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I did put it in here. All right. So we're going to do this ourselves now. I'm just going to give you a couple of hints uh, beforehand. So the iframe code clicks into a certain size of page, um, you can change that or your web designer can change that. So just so that you know, in the knowledge base, uh, they give you instructions on how to do that. And that can be very useful. So the default is a standard page size, but you may well want to change, adjust that and it is adjustable and here's how you do it. So when you get this presentation from me, this will be a link that shows you to the right page in the knowledge base. Um, uh, my just recommendation to you, the knowledge base has got a couple of, of videos on using public map, which I think are brilliant, uh, first class. So again, oops, sorry. Uh, should you uh, have your village website based upon Squarespace or upon Wix, which are two major development platforms for websites nowadays, uh, the other one you probably heard of is WordPress, but um, there are specific instructions for these two, which again are in the knowledge base articles. So if your village website is based on either of these, then again, uh, there's a particular instruction for you. It's actually very straightforward. So we're going to go through uh, creating one and then editing it, but I'm just putting a note in here for you for future reference that clicking on the pencil icon lets you make edits. And you do, again, you delete a public map by selecting it from the list of maps and then just click on the dustbin. Right, let's go into play it for ourselves. So to get you started, you need to be up in the cogwheel, top right corner, select administration, and then select public map and the plus sign to get started. 
Now, when you're doing this, I'm going to sit back and drink coffee and orange juice and uh, keep an eye on you. But you can create a public map in any way that you wish. Just go through the steps. If you're having any issues, um, shout at me. Hopefully that timeline that they put along the top will show you everything you want to do. Graham, I'm still having difficulty. On the page it says new public map, available layers. I can't move down the list. You can't move down the list at all? Uh, Interesting. Okay, I've well, just found a spot. It's moving. Let's, um, let's, if you can, are you on a screen now that you can share with us? You're still on the other PC. Um, it's all right, I've got it moving now. So, <laughs> right, press on then. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a question about what is Ramsar from Phil. It, I can't remember what the, um, the letters stand for. Let me have a look whilst you're working, I'll go and find out. Sure, you want to know this, Phil? <laughs> our convention is an international treaty for the conservation and wise use of wetlands. It's named after the Iranian city of Ramsar, where the treaty was signed. So, All right. Now you know. All to do with wetlands. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I'd forgotten that Ramsar is a place. Can you hear me, Graham? Sure. Um, 
I've got a screen now, which are you, uh, sh am I sharing my screen with you? Not yet, okay. but you are very welcome to. Let's get that there. Uh, So are you on the Zoom screen, Phil? Yes. There we go. Okay, it's started. Yep, now I can see it. So that's the what I've just come up to. Yeah, the grip bin distribution. Yep. So I can now I can now share those links, can't I? Yes. So if you do a click on the little icon to the right of the share URL. Yeah, that one. Click on that. Yes, click there. Now open up a new tab in your browser and just paste that into the tab. Okay. Um, right. So is there a plus sign at the top? I'm no, there isn't. I've got your... Of your, your browser, go to the top of the page. Yes. Is that a plus sign for a new... I'll bring that down. And then I can use that one. Okay. That's it. Just to, to do a control V into the, the there or paste, whatever you, however you do it. Yep, that's the one. Enter. And there it is. Right. It's not very big. It's not very big and it's not very clear. I think yeah. you've got a, have you got a toggle mask on? I think you must have. I've got, I put agricultural land on. No, that, that's okay. That's what those colored spodges are. Yes. But what you're saying is that you'd like it to be larger, so you can just click and scroll in now. You should be able to. What happens if you use your roller, or the, the plus sign at the top left? Does that work? Yep, there you go. That's better, much more better. And all I, all I asked to put on this there were the grip bin distributions. Well, plus whatever the, the agricultural layer is. Yeah. Right? Um, so do you know whether it, there's a grip bin? Is that a grip bin? Yeah, there, there's one there, all right. Yeah. So what happens if you click on that? Bingo. So there's your ownership. Good. It's 60% uh, full. Yeah. And it's bill, bin number two. That's fair enough. I'm a bit puzzled at your, um, the, the lack of intensity. It's not a very bright screen, is it? No, that's getting better. All right, maybe it's just catching up with you. So this is, you've, you've successfully created a public map, Phil, and it may or may not be what you're looking for, but it's certainly working. Yeah. So if you turn off the land classification, just out of interest, there you go. And it all becomes crystal clear. It also becomes a lot brighter. So yes. I like that. So that seems to have worked. Yes. Are you happy? Yep, fine, thank you. Good, good. John, how are you doing? Um, well, I've created a public map for allotments. But right. It doesn't actually show you the allotments. Okay, well, if you I ask... Don't know how, how they would be introduced into... Uh, Parish online. Well, um, let's ask Phil if he would stop sharing his screen. Okay, hang on a second. And we can take a look at John's. Ah, well, I, I moved on to something about cemeteries. Okay. But um, again, I don't think the information comes down. Ah. Well, let's take a look at. Uh... So Phil, you need to switch back to your. Um... I'm sorry. Yeah, if you just find, can't find it, do an alt tab. Um, stop share. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, well done. Thank you. <coughs> John, are you happy with sharing? Um, I need to be told how to do it. But okay, uh, yeah. so you're on your Zoom screen at the moment. If you move your mouse down to the bottom and the middle of the screen, uh, you should be seeing a green icon that says screen sharing. No. Are you on a Mac or a PC? Windows. I'm, I'm on a PC, but because I'm in a public map, I need to come out of it, I think. Oh, yes. So 
the easier way to do that is if you put your uh, one finger on your alt key on the keyboard and the other one you just tap the tab key once it'll switch screens for you so hold down alt and each time you press tab you get another screen I, i've got you now thank you good so now if you move your mouse to the middle of the bottom of the screen you should get up the green icon yeah screen yeah yep so click on that and then it comes up and gives you a choice of what screen do you want to share you can click on the parish online once and there we go it's coming yep okay so i've got your your public map that looks fine except it's not you're not happy with it yet because you're not seeing any uh allotments you're saying well it was cemeteries i was going into i okay. closed the allotment one and i'd tried something else with a different mapping view the first of the right school. well we, we this you're in the start location um were you playing around with this because this is not a particularly uh what's the word intuitive position to be shown no, quite well one of the cemeteries is near the a1m okay the old great north road but as i say it's not showing anything right so let's can we go um there's a back button on the bottom right just click back i've tried that Oh, yep, okay. that's good okay so you've got cemetery boundaries on which is good um i wonder if there are any in your town maybe they haven't been created yet well we have several cemeteries in the church oh, yes i'm sure you do but when you look in parish online do you see them um i believe i did because i made an allocation with parish online okay adjacent to the existing cemetery because we need a bit more space in the years right ahead. so can i suggest whilst you're on this page john go down to the bottom of the left column and select cemetery plots and put those in as well there we go let's just go and see if that makes any difference so if you click on next yeah it's taking its time yeah well we're all subject to our internet connection yeah um you don't need any from here so click on oh wait 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 um if you type on cemetery if you just type cemetery or, or scroll down on the left hand side do you get anything um i think you can just type cem on your keyboard but if not you're on the you're on b already you can just go down to c for cemeteries if you scroll down i'm not sure what i'm looking at now i've got oh if you look. okay so go to the left hand lot and then can you scroll down if you just slide yours um cursor slightly to the right of those little green arrows there you go good yeah i just want to see if it comes up with c for cemetery if you, you know, just press your down arrow john i don't think oh. there's a cemetery there is there mm, no. no okay we're all part in that case there's there's none there that's just fine so is let's go showing... now to your next button on the right hand side yeah, it's, it's showing conservation areas, which is the main purpose of today anyway. <laughs> okay, do you want to select them? Uh, well, let's see if it comes up with anything. Yeah, exactly. And next. Yeah, keep going. It won't be there yet. That's just, if you were looking there, it's not going to find it because it hasn't displayed the layers. That's just the base map at the moment. So move on to next. Okay, and uh, again, move on, save. And we just patiently wait a little. Yeah, so it's got allotment boundaries. It hasn't listed the new one yet. Is that, no, exactly. So I think we're just waiting for that. It will pop up, I think, in a second. The arrow's twitching, so that may indicate some <laughs> nervous activity. Good. Um, I didn't name this yet. Ah, okay. I hadn't realised we hadn't named it. Um, no, I was going to, but we moved on. Can I go back at all? I think we. Well, I did see you save it, but maybe we haven't got anything. If there's no name to it, we can't find it again. So. Uh, if you go back to the beginning of uh, public map to start afresh basically 
Yes, click click on a new one. Uh, yeah, and okay. away you go. Yeah, I'll just click detailed. Out. Okay, good. Next. So you want, uh, again, your symmetry boundaries and your symmetry plots. Next um, one, yeah, symmetry plots, next one down. Ooh. No, I'm not seeing yeah. that. But it was there, it was, whoops. Yeah. There it is, yeah. Good, next. And next again, you, you need from there. And that will do as a starting spot. So next again. <clears throat> I know the title. Yeah. Yes, give it. Yes, whatever you want to call it. Sawtree Cemeteries. Yeah. And then next, a save. A world save, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Good. So now it's there. It's there, first class. So if you click, John, on the... Uh, the share URL box, right hand side, just click on the icon to the end of it, at the end of that line. Um, so the little icon on the right hand, right hand end of that line. Well, it's, it's covered, unfortunately. By uh, we, we just move pictures. the picture. Okay, just move the pictures. You just yeah. put the arrow on them and shift them. Got it? Good. Yeah. Now, if you go up to the plus sign at the very top of your screen in the middle and open a new bound, uh, browser tab up up no higher than that up 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 way up the top yeah you, you've got a plus sign or is it it's, you've got the sharing thing in the way right yeah, i suspect you can't it's see the a of r yeah that's it there you go now just do um a base <laughs> or control v john which is yeah There you go, just hit enter. Yeah, that's what we want. And then we just wait for your internet to catch up with you. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> we don't have it. Yes. <coughs> so now you probably need to scroll in a bit. If you can click on your plus sign or roll your mouse, whichever way you go. Yeah, there you go, that's great. So what we need you to do, John, is to move the map to where you know there is a cemetery. Well, there's a little area with a border around it. Yes, and is that it? Uh, that is where the cemetery is, yeah. Perfect, okay, so that, that's, <coughs> that's one. It's only covered half of it. Well, um, we need to, we're, in a second, we'll go back to your live parish online and see what it says about that cemetery. But in the meantime, have you got anything else? Or is that the only one? Um, it hasn't brought up the church. It may be because there's too little uh, area revealed. I just see if the church. Uh, yes, so it's quite away from the, yes, I see what you say. It's quite away from the cemetery, is it? Well, it's a civic, civil cemetery. Right, oh, there's an old saint's church to the left. See yeah. that? Well, it's not showing that as a cemetery. And there is a cemetery there, is there? Very much so. It's a closed okay. cemetery now. Well, it again. Sound, sounds like then that you're one of the many uh, cemeteries around the country that hasn't yet gone into um, the Ordnance Survey map. Could be, but it is a closed cemetery now. That may have something to do with it. Well, we can certainly add it back in. Um, if you're happy to do that now, and if uh, if Phil's happy, then yes. why don't we go back in and, and, and add it? So, so you can come out of your public map, John, so you can close the this browser window up at the top on the X, just to remove it for convenience sake. Yep. And now we can finish with that. So you, if you uh, can see the top right-hand corner, I think there's probably a little globe to go back to maps, isn't there? Yeah. You need to move, or are the photographs in the way? Sorry, our pictures. No, I've up. clicked on it, it's just waking up. Okay, good. <laughs> Got that hypnotic circle, which takes <laughs> yes. So if you scroll down a little bit, the layers on the left-hand side, 
just below where it says allotments, there should be one that says cemeteries. Um, so you can just yeah scroll down like that. Oh, whoa, 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 sorry, I think we missed it. Go up a couple. Um, I thought I saw it just at the top. Oh, yes. There we go. Alphabetical order, quite. Yeah. So if you now click on cemetery boundaries, yep, just turn that on, good. And then the only one that pops up is that one that you showed us to the right. Yeah. And the one in the church doesn't pop up. So let's put one in. So uh, if you can find your church. <clears throat> yeah. Takes me a little while. Yeah, no, it's, uh, as you say, patience is the virtue. Yeah, wait for the map to catch up with you, really. Right. Yeah, let's get into it. Church Causeway is a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it all catch up? Yeah. Yes, there we are. There we go, well done. All right, so what we're now going to do is to add the uh, broad outline of the cemetery. And this field will recognize from previous lessons, when you're doing a, a new diagram like this, just give it at the start a very rough outline. I'm sure it's a lot more precise, but just for now, give it a rough outline. So if you click on the left-hand column, Click on the X at the top. And in the cemetery layer, you need to go down a little bit to the cemetery layer. Yep, right click in the cemetery boundaries uh, layer. Just right click inside there, John. And add a feature. Yeah. Good. Right, so yes, you, you're familiar with this, okay, F first class. Double click, very neat, all done. So give it a name on the left-hand side. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> then, then the rest of the information if you can fill in it's really <coughs> helpful because this information gets passed back up to um, the ICCM which is the Institute of Cemeteries and Crematorium Management who basically are the sort of authority um, if you would got two um, two designations within the one cemetery um for instance you might have church and you might have local parish well that wouldn't they be part of the same church no well not well if this if it's full john you didn't you tell me that this one was dead not dead but closed was, uh, designated yes. as a closed cemetery yes so although it's in use in a simple sense of oh i see okay reserved plots yeah. Um, okay. If I went along and said I want to be buried there, they say, "Sorry, you're a disbeliever. You can't come anyway." <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, we right. have a similar situation, John, where our churchyard is closed, but the yeah, parish has bought too. some adjoining land uh, because the parish has a legal duty to dispose of its dead. So we bought the adjoining land, and that's now the parish burial ground. But then I think that's what I put in other notes, wouldn't you, Phil? Just say okay. PC second, uh, whatever. Yeah. Or John would say, see the new burial ground at such and such, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. But 
Perfect. All right, so if you now click on save, John. Yes, I wanted oh. advice on type. Okay. Conventional, woodland, natural, other. Well, it's probably conventional, isn't it? Right. You know, gravestones. Yeah, well, and... Put that in, fine. Yeah. Oh. All right, so there are two layers in Parish Online, which are what they call national layers. So nearly all the layers that you create or have a look at have nothing to do with anybody else. No one else can see them. But the allotments and the cemeteries get passed up to the appropriate national authority because they've openly admitted that they're way out of date on their records, such as this one. So this mm -hmm. one wasn't showing at all. So, John, uh, you're familiar with this. If you wanted to tidy up those boundaries, you could um, you haven't clicked on save yet. Would you? No, I can't see save. Oh, um, bottom left, bottom left. Well, right, of course. No, I was looking at the right hand side. Yeah. Now mm. that's, that's happier. So if you uh, if you wanted to be fussy, you could go into the uh, record you've just created by clicking anywhere. Sorry, close the feature editor on the left with the X at the top. Yeah. Now that's not the shape I drew, was it? Uh, yes, shape. it was. Absolutely. It includes the church, whereas... Well, oh. but that's, that is the way you drew it. But now that's why I'm suggesting we can go back in and adjust it. So if you click anywhere inside that boundary, right. you'll bring up the record on the left side, click on cemetery boundaries on the left, yep. and then click on the pencil at the top left so that you can now edit. And you can now mm. go into there and tidy it all up the way you want it. Well, do I exclude the church from the cemetery? I'd have thought I did. Well, I, yeah, by all means, so let's do that. So the easiest way to do that, yes, is to go there, click there, bring it across. Absolutely. Yep. So is the path, in fact, one side of the cemetery? I mean, does, does the path cut it in two? Yeah. I'm not quite sure what that path is. Oh, I right. You don't think it exists really in exists. reality? It's not a public path. No, uh, when we did this for our local parish, I had to do two features, one for the east side and one for the west, because, as you say, the church just slam bang in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and so I created two cemeteries. And you Which may wish to I say, do. you may wish to say this is the northern part. And then you do a separate diagram for the southern part. If there is, is there, are there more graves to the south of the church or are um, they all to the north? They're not graves, but they are. Um areas where people can put the remains, you know, the, the ashes. Right. Right. So does that count as a cemetery? I, I think I'm going to leave that one. If you leave me, it does. Yeah. OK. So now when you're happy with that, uh, John, if you click on save, just to make sure you keep track of the ones you, that's right. Brilliant. Right. So that, that's a very useful thing we've done today. Yeah. I hope, I hope you feel. <laughs> yeah, actually, I can just tidy that up a little bit. Okay, yes, of course you can. Uh, uh, when you're making these adjustments, I often find or I recommend that you zoom in and get a much larger scale. It's much easier to yeah. tie things to boundaries if you're on right. a large scale. There you go. <clears throat> well, you can play with this for hours, really, can't you? But... <laughs> Yes, it's except fine. you get you get very adept at uh, uh, very shortly at uh, tidying things up. But then, what we really want to see is to go back to your um, public map, the URL, and see if this is being added to it. Yes. So when you finish making adjustments and you clicked on save, which looks like you've done. Yeah. Good. Now let's go back to. Um, if you go back to the, the very top of your screen, the plus sign to add a new browser window. Keep going up, yep. And now do control V. You should, I think you've probably still got the same address in there. there. Yep. Yes. So just hit enter. I'm curious to see if it's added it or whether we need to make some change. Oh, it's yeah, there, yeah. excellent, good. So that was really my point. Uh, earlier on, I was saying any changes you make are automatically reflected in the public map, and lo and behold, that's happened. Yeah. So, big sigh of relief on my part. <laughs> Very impressive. And 
this isn't in the public domain yet, is it? Uh, no, you, it'll be passed up in. Well, when you say the public domain, no, it's not until you send that URL to somebody, yeah. or you send it to your web designer, or if you do the, the you know, whoever looks after your parish website, you give it to them, or you. They may ask you for that iframe code, which is that second box in the bottom of the public lab. That's still accessible, then, is it? Um... Oh yes. So if you go back to your um, admin in the top corner. And click on the cogwheel and admin. Um, oh, you're in public map at the moment. You need to come out of the public map and yeah. go back to Parish Online, John. Just click on the left tab up top. Yep. Go left. That's well, yep, perfect. Okay, so now close down the cemetery boundaries box on the left hand side. Just click on X. Yep. Go to the top right corner, click on the little cogwheel. Um, yep. All the way to the top right. It's, and, uh, and administration, administration yeah. Again, yeah. Good. And if you now click on public maps on the left hand side, good. Click on your cemeteries. And there is the, the code, the bottom right. Right. So the embed code is probably what your um, web, web designer, designer will want. Uh, and your your URL is, is the one that you've got in your clipboard you can send to anybody just out of interest or fun or whatever. Mm. That's the um, uh, church, uh, uh, what, what are they called? Oh dear. Well, Warden, the church warden might be interested. Yeah. Um, so you can send in that today and you can send the embed code to whoever looks after your website. Yeah, okay. Um, and I, we, I think it'd be good to let him know that there's more where that came from, and because you can now start doing all sorts of things with public maps. So people like to see, for instance, all the footpaths around your, your village. Yes. Um, so you can produce that, or that's just one example. Well, the example I was after was the conservation area. Of course it was, yes, I'm sorry. Well, uh, we can go ahead and produce that now if you like, it's very fast. Well, if it's quick, because I don't want to, uh, take too much time from Phil. No, well, you're, you're very welcome. I think everyone is enjoying this. So if you click on the plus sign at the top of the public map column, yep. We're going to add a new one. I would go for detailed mapping. Yeah. Yeah. Next. And click on conservation area if it's there. It's not probably in that. Oh, do you know that you've got a conservation area? We have I mean, definitely. Yeah. That it's in Parish Online is what it, I meant. It, closes my own ground which is subject to a planning permission so there's certainly one there yes but do you see it in in parish online when you're looking at parish online no okay so either either we need to add it or you need to talk to your district council well i thought it would come through the district <laughs> <laughs> well but, I do have, Phil, I've got news for you. Yes. You know, that conversation that we've been having about uh, district councils. Yes. I've been talking to ours, and they have just released an extra 20 layers, which is fabulous. Have they? Yes. And in fact, yeah. as it happens, a couple of years ago, they bought XMAP, which is the big brother to Parish Online. Yeah. And they've, it's taken them this long to start exporting the data from their mm. previous system to the new one. But now they've got it, they can export layers at the flick of a, a button. It's wonderful. Yes. So I, got, I got 20 new ones on Friday to play with, and I'm going back to them today to say, why are we stopping at 20? Send me everything. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's very easy. Does that apply easy. to any district council then? Yes, any district oh, yes. council can export their data to you, John. Most of them uh, have no idea that they can do that or that you've got Parish Online, and they don't know that Parish Online is a proper geographical information system and obeys all the rules. I've got the uh, feeling uh, Huntingdon have some system of their own. I'm sure they do, but it doesn't matter. It'll obey the, um, the, the global format for GISs and they can export it straight into XMAP. You, if you know someone to talk to there, and the yeah. ideal 
the ideal person is the customer service director or um yes, they don't have one in john's case it was customer service lead wasn't it yeah. <laughs> yes <clears throat> you, you don't want to talk to the it department you don't want to talk to the gis department you do want to talk to the person whose job it is to make sure the council is delivering its services properly yeah well i have a link with the planners and they're usually quite helpful Okay, so what you want to tell them is that Geosphere, the people who create Parish Online, they will do all the work necessary to export data to Parish Online. And once it's been done once, it's there forever. So in other words, it doesn't cost the district council any time. It doesn't cost any resource. They just need to give access to uh, Geosphere. Do they have to ask Geosphere then or? Uh, well, what I, I tend to suggest people do is when they're writing to the district authority to ask for this to happen, you CC in in your email uh, support at geosphere.com. And they, uh, they take it from there because they should get the reply from the district council. And by all means, uh, you can feel free to include me if you like, because I love to get involved and start helping bash councils on the head um, because it does work and and we've just found out that uh, it's really uh, beginning to pour out of somerset district council now um, the last thing i mentioned to you is the classic example so there is in the north of somerset a unitary called bath and northeast somerset mm. and they made the decision over a decade ago that it was far less expensive for them to give each of their parishes a copy of parish online so they pay the subscription each year and the money money they say by not having to answer all those questions from all those parishes it makes it a no-brainer to continue doing so so they've done this for over a decade now and the, the real point that i'm making is that they export 400 layers of data continuously to parish online and the man, the, the guy in charge of their GIS department is a very nice guy called Martin Laker. And he says he's continuously mind bubbled by the layers that parishes choose to use. So they've got stuff that they had no idea anyone would be interested in, but somebody somewhere will pounce on it and say, that's just what I was looking for. And mm -hmm. off they go. But it's all exported continuously anyway. And it, there's no effort involved on any of the parts of the GIS department in Baines. They just, uh, it just is, it was set up, you know, a year ago, a decade ago, um, and it continues to work fine. fine. And no, that's how it should, I think that's how it should be. So I'm, my aim is to try and get every district council in the country to do the same thing. Mm. Now, you've talked about planning applications before. I go into the Huntington website, but you're suggesting they should be able to come through Parish Online as well. Oh, yes, ours does. But will um, mine of necessity or will they have to be asked for? Oh, you, you always have to ask for it. No one ever does anything at the council level without being asked yeah, for it. Right. <clears throat> but um, what we have found, and to be fair to Somerset, at both the county level and the district level, once it's been explained to them, they've been really, really helpful and cooperative. I think it's it comes as a vast surprise to them to be on the receiving end of lots of gratitude and thanks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, not to mention the data that parishes could uh, give them by, by updating. Uh, uh, yes, so. that's 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 <clears throat> my next level with the South Somerset people is to say that now that you've started exporting to us, can we please start exporting to you? Because it is yeah. a two-way street, we can parish online can export back to them. So the the usual thing is things like you know, footpaths, because we've certainly got footpaths downloaded to us from the county council that go straight through the middle of lakes, and either they haven't <laughs> discovered the lake exists yet, or they, they willy nilly <laughs> said it must be a bridge or whatever. But we know perfectly well that the path goes around the outside of the lake. Yeah. Uh, so I want to be able to update their records uh, from ours, which would be a degree of trust that um, has yet to happen. But uh, the, the the relationship we're building is such that I think they will do that. Did you see the email from Chris News on Friday, Graham? Uh, he he was very helpful, wasn't he? But I can't remember yes. if Don, if uh, Thomas has replied mm. yet. 
No, he hasn't. Well, if he has, I'm not copied into it, but certainly they're on the case. They're trying to persuade Thomas to pull his finger out and download some data. <laughs> yes, well, again, for John's benefit as well as yours, Phil, um, the way that <clears throat> Spear do this is that they will give a free copy of XMAP to any district council that wants it because it makes it so much easier to export the data. So as long as they're going to use NextFat for nothing else but just data um, exporting, then it's free. Yeah. Now, XMAP in itself is as capable as their very expensive full GIS system. So yeah. this donation is a, a big plus. And of course, mm. the, the whole idea, hopefully, is that the district council will say, well, why are we paying 10 times more for our great big expensive system than we could pay for XMAP, which does the same thing anyway? Yeah. Well, they, use, the, they use stat map i know they do yeah. and uh, that was fine because chris's email didn't he say I'm, I'm quite happy to take wmf which is what yeah. a stat map like a guys like to export which is fine um and john a question just just that has come up with the rest of us is how often do you want to do the updates <laughs> and uh it, it really makes sense to do it at the frequency that the council is uploading stuff. Mm. So, for instance, um, some stuff is on a regular, you know, we'll update it once a month. Sometimes they only update it once every six months or even once a year. Um, so there's not a lot of point in Parish Online grabbing the data, except at the after the annual or the semi-annual, whatever it happens to be, update. But it can be continuous if that's the sort of data you're playing with, which is what you are playing with with planning applications. Mm. Oh, I didn't. Did I tell you, Phil? There's a funny story to the South Somerset one. When they exported the parish, uh, the planning applications to me, they yeah. sent me all of them since the record started. <laughs> it's the first time I've clicked on table view and it yeah. said, downloaded 70,964 records. <laughs> I've yeah. never done anything with 70,000 records before. It's quite mind-blowing. Mm. But it was entertaining. And, and and they are, as I say, once they've learned that they can be helpful to you, they're really, really tremendous. Mm. It's been my our experience in Somerset, certainly. They've been wonderful. Yes. So I'm very happy to help. Let's bury them in data and then they won't fester us. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And there's, there's no skin off your nose to have 400 layers. You just only select the ones you want. Yeah. Uh, that's the beauty of a cloud system. It doesn't make any difference to you how much data is being stored. You're not having to find the server space for it. You're not having to provide yeah. the bandwidth for it. Yeah, so, your, burying your boss in data in the ministry was called a snowflake job. So you didn't have time to see what you were really doing in your office. <laughs> very, right. very similar. So formally, that's the end of this training session. I just need to check with you that neither of you has any questions you wish answered. And you can do it in any topic of Parish Online. I'm not fussed about where we go. What does PSGA stand for? Public? Public Sector uh, Geospatial Agreement. Oh, right, yes. Basically, that's the, uh, the the legislation that says you have full access to the Ordnance Survey map. Yeah. Because yeah. You're, in, you're working in the public sector as your yeah. parish council mm -hmm. role. Good. Yeah, so that's all very useful. I've got to do some more experimenting and practice. Yes. Too. Yes. Well, do, John, do ask your district council for the conservation area oh, data well, yes. and explain to them how straightforward it is if they uh, talk to geosphere um and it won't cost them anything but on the other hand if you know where your conservation area is we can always quickly draw it in for you uh well i'd like to get their official one um yeah, of course the neighborhood yeah. plan if i start putting it in they might start quibbling yeah <laughs> i'm sure they will yeah, yeah. Okay. okay very well, helpful I hope that's been helpful very much so, yes. Thank you. Yes. Very nice to see you both. And Phil, I look forward to seeing possibly somebody at 11.30 and possibly not. Yes, I've sent her a message. Um, the other thing, Graham, I'm down for tomorrow, but I'm not going to be able to make tomorrow's session. So I should have to rebook that at a later date. Okay. Well, you just feel free to go ahead and, and rebook and cancel that one. 
Okay, thanks very much. Thank you very much for letting me know. And yes, and thank you for um, for your input over the last week, week and a half. I think I still owe you a couple of presentations, which I'm working on this morning. Okay, well, thanks very much. You should have got one just before we started this session. Uh, I was hoping you complain bitterly to me, and I tell you, well, why on earth don't you check your email? <laughs> <laughs> I did see them actually. It arrived in the last thirty seconds. Yes. <laughs> Um, right, no, I think I've got a couple of others to send you. I'll, I'll check on them and send okay. them out. Yes, thank you. And I will send you both today's video and today's uh, presentation. Well, thanks very much indeed. Thank you both very Bye much. Bye. Yep. Good okay. Bye then. Thanks, Graham. Take care. Bye-bye, both. Bye now.